There are a lot of videos out there about how to save money and I decided today I wanted to make one that really encompasses the things that my husband and I have really done to be in the position that we are and not necessarily give you a list but give you some um, umbrellas and some ideas under those umbrellas of things that you can look into that might help you. These are just things that work for us so you can certainly take what you want and leave the rest. We are currently on the path to pay off our house in less than five years. We put just about half of our income towards our mortgage. That is not what our mortgage payment is. That is the extra that we are putting. So essentially, we save almost 50% of our income by utilizing some of the tips and tricks that I'm about to share with you. But before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Jennifer, I am happy to have you. I make videos weekly on my journey to financial independence and a peaceful life through saving money, minimalism, and mindfulness. And if any of that interests you, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. The first pillar is games and challenges. Well, what does that have to do with saving money? I have always been of the personality that if you will dare me, or if you will say that I can't do something, then you better believe I'm coming out swinging. I am going to do it, and I'm going to do it in spite of you. So the best thing that you can do to me is to challenge me and say that I can't do it. So, with games and challenges, this is a fun way to start out saving money and to really get up momentum going forward so you can make a change in your life when it comes to the way you think about money. One of the first things you can do as a challenge is no spend days. So at the beginning of a month, you can keep a blank monthly calendar and every day that you don't spend any money, maybe put a green dollar sign in it or a green X. And at the end of the money, <laughs> at the end of the money, at the end of the month, See how many days you were able to go not spending money. Now this challenge means that during that day, you aren't going to the coffee shop. You aren't going to pick up lunch. These are also days that you don't get gas. So obviously there are gonna be days that you have to spend money, but see how long you can go without spending money. You can make this no spend um, challenge things that or wants versus needs. So if you need to go out and buy some toilet paper or you need to go get gas, then maybe you don't consider that a uh, spend day. But the days that you don't go get coffee or a donut or go out to lunch, etc., that's a no spend day. So this is a fun challenge that I like to play every once in a while. Another challenge that I did years ago was every time I came across a $5 bill, I would save it. A lot of people don't use cash these days, but I still do. I really enjoy it. Um, it just makes you, it makes it hurt more when you spend cash than if you just swipe your credit card. So every time I would get a $5 bill, I would put it in a bucket. So do that for a month and at the end of the month, see how much you have and then maybe keep it going. Uh, maybe start it from now until Christmas and that money that you save with that $5 challenge helps pay for Christmas gifts. To find other games and challenges to play, go to Pinterest. It is full of them, and some of them will give you charts and say, hey, if you wanna save $10,000 by the end of the year, you need to save this amount this week, and this amount this week, and this amount this week. So it's kind of fun. So head on over to Pinterest and look at some challenges and maybe put one of these into action. I guarantee you it will kickstart your want and your enjoyment of saving money. The second pillar, as I call it, um, of helping you to save money is food. Um, this can outright change your life. The way you spend money on food, um, the way you eat, it can really have a huge impact. If you look back at your budget and you try to account for how much you spend at the grocery store or on going out, it could be just as much or right underneath the amount that you spend on housing. This is typically in people's budgets, the second largest item underneath housing. So to really dig into this and get it under control could really save you a lot of money. This has taken time for me to do things one way or another way to kind of find what fits for myself and for our family. And I'll just tell you a few of the things that, that we do that help us save tremendously on groceries. 
The first thing you need to do is meal plan. I have been consistently meal planning for two years. I meal plan monthly. So my husband and I are not together every night of the month based off because of our jobs. So we, at the beginning of the month, go through and figure out what days we're gonna be together. Those are the days that I cook essentially. If there are other days where it's just myself or my daughter or vice versa, then we will have either leftovers or something quick. Meal planning is huge because it allows you to know what you need when you go to the grocery store because when you meal plan, you know what you are going to get for the next week and you only get what you need, what you don't already have. If you just go into the grocery store blindly, you're pretty much gonna put all kinds of things into your cart. And not only are you gonna spend too much money, but you're also going to waste a lot of food because you didn't plan when you were going to or how you were going to cook or eat that food. You also need to make larger meals. So this is key in regards to leftovers. My husband has been better at this for the entire time I've known him where he constantly takes leftovers for his lunch or dinner if he is at work during that time. Um, <laughs> I for years fought this because I hated leftovers, but what I've come to realize is I need to make bigger meals of the things that I will eat as leftovers versus things that I don't like heated up. So when I'm thinking about making meals for the next week, I will generally make more so that we can at least get one to two meals, extra meals out of that dinner that we make. For instance, if we're cooking rice and beans and making tacos, etc., we'll add an extra can of beans or an extra box of rice, extra pe peppers and onions to put over it. So we have a couple of meals for that week. And if we cook three to four times a week, then we have a variety of leftovers that we can utilize and not eat, you know, chicken noodle soup for three days in a row, which is what people typically think about when they think about eating leftovers. We don't make huge amount that way we have to eat it every single day. We make it to where we can have one to two extra meals. The next part of this is preparing the night before. So if you, um, go to work, you don't work from home, or um, your, your kids are going to school, preparing the night before, because the morning of, you're not going to feel like preparing your meal, you're not going to feel like cooking anything, you're not gonna feel like trying to use the mental energy to figure out what you wanna eat for the next, for that day. So the night before, go ahead and prep everything you need for the next day. That's not including just your lunches, that's also including snacks. So set aside what you're gonna have for lunch, put it in the refrigerator, set aside what you wanna have for snacks, if it's a banana, if it's a pack of crackers, if it's a, a chocolate bar, whatever it is, put it aside, that way it's quick and easy for you to get when you get up in the morning. This will prevent you from ordering out lunch, which can cost you 15 to $20 sometimes, depending upon where you live or what you get. This will also prevent you from going down to the snack machine and spending money there. All of which ordering out and snack machine, vending machines are not nearly as healthy as the options that you would go ahead and lay out for yourself the night before. The next one is grocery shopping one time per week. Do not go to the grocery store multiple times. If you do this meal prep and you know monthly the meals for that month each week at the beginning of the week or the weekend whenever you go to the store make that list of what you need for the following week now sometimes there will be something that you missed or you ran out of or is no longer fresh by the time you need to make it then you might need to run in but for the most part try to limit going to the grocery store to one time per week the next one is buy store brands um, they don't make different factories for store-bought spaghetti sauce versus, I mean, store-brand spaghetti sauce versus Prego or Prego, Prego, Prego or Ragu or Bertoli or whatever that may be. Typically, these factories that make these make pretty much a variety of, of different pasta sauces or breads or boxed meals that are the same. So I really encourage you to step outside your box and try the store brand ketchup or the store brand mayonnaise or the store brand 
vegetable or baked beans. I think you're really gonna see a difference in the cost of the item and very little difference in the taste. A lot of it is mental. For instance, my husband, for some reason, he only, we could never buy anything but Hellman's mayonnaise. Well, one day I bought Walmart and guess what I now buy? Walmart, <laughs> because he no longer tastes any different. In it. I have two more things under food, groceries, and meals, and this is the largest category as because of how I explained earlier, it can be a huge part of your budget. So the next one is when you're doing that meal plan, try to plan things that are cheap meals. So meaning don't go onto Pinterest and put a whole bunch of new recipes that you want to try that have all of these different seasonings and ingredients that you only need a little bit of for this one recipe that you don't even know if you like. This has happened to me many times where I've tried to branch out and experiment. For the most part, during your life, you can probably realize that you pretty much eat just about the same thing. Your, your habits continue. So when you're doing a monthly meal plan, just create a variety of, of um, meals that you and your family love. Maybe you create a master list, which I actually have. It's a master list of things meals that we put together that we love that we really enjoy and that way when you're making your monthly plan you can go onto that list and pull from that list to create different meals during the week and during the month now in that same vein make sure that they are simple meals spaghetti is not a very expensive meal something for us in particular like mac and cheese with green beans and carrots is not an expensive meal uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup it's not an expensive meal Chili is not an expensive meal. So things like this that you can make that are easy are much better on your wallet and gonna be better over time. The last one I have under this is eat less meat. Years ago, we started Meatless Mondays and that's actually transitioned into a, forming a different type of vegetarian vegan lifestyle for us, but that may not be for everybody and that's completely up to you. But the cost of meat, um, just the sheer cost of it, not the, um, not economic, but um, environmental cost of it, etc. Just the sheer cost of meat in the grocery store is large. I mean, a pack of chicken, nine to ten dollars just for one meal. When you could have a meal of maybe a pasta and some sides of vegetables and a side of fruit for half of that price and have a much larger meal. So try out maybe doing one do a meatless Monday, that's where we started. And then eight years later is where we are now, but do a meatless Monday. Um, and then maybe transition it into a, a couple of times a week. You'll really start to see a big difference in the cost um, of it versus in your budget when you don't have to buy meat during the week. It makes a huge difference. The third pillar or umbrella, as I'm calling it in this video, is adopting minimalism this is becoming much more mainstream and i've mentioned it on and off um, on my channel i have been doing minimalism for probably i think it's two and a half years now and it has made a huge difference in my life um, a couple of things to reference if you really want to start looking into it is to watch currently still on netflix the documentary minimalism and then there's also Joshua Becker who has a YouTube channel. Um, he started this movement. I feel like he's one of the founding fathers, probably it's, I think it's more than 10 years ago. And he has a couple of books, The Minimalist Home and The More of Less, which are amazing. And <laughs> it literally, literally made me do a clean sweep of my entire house. My husband was worried that I would be kicking him out of the house at the time. Um, certainly I wouldn't do that, but it was um, an amazing awakening and such an, a burst of energy to find something like this that could really not only help in my financial journey, but also help in mental clutter, mental anguish, mental uh, depression. It has many more benefits than just financially. So a good way to start on a minimal challenge is to do um, the minimalist, uh, which are Joshua Fields Melbourne and Ryan Nicodemus. They have their own YouTube channel as well, so you can check that out. And they are the main headliners in the film Minimalism, but they have a challenge called a 30-day challenge. So maybe you can start this now. 
Um, so on the first of the month versus to the 30th of the month, each day of the month, you get rid of one thing per the date. So if it's the first, you get rid of one thing. If it's the fifth, you get rid of five things. If it's the seventh, you get rid of seven things. If it's the 30th, you get where I'm going with this. Over that month, that all adds up to a lot of things you can get rid of. Now, that doesn't mean that they have to be huge, significant things that you get rid of. It could be a extra bobby pin or a sock that no longer has a friend, a piece of trash in your car, etc. Just get rid of and dispose of or gift away the number of things for the number, the day it is. It prevents you from just buying stuff because you spent all this time going through your house decluttering it. You really start to second guess when you're out shopping. Do I really need this? Do I want this? Do I want to take this into my house and then in six months just declutter it again? A good rule to go by is you could adopt the one in one out rule. This is great for especially clothing. If you want to buy a new pair of jeans then you got to you will know that when you come home you've got to get rid of a pair of jeans so that's really going to make you think is this pair of jeans that i want to buy better than the five pair that i already have am i willing to sacrifice one of those five pair for this pair of jeans you could also do um, the number of hangers so let's say you want to only have 50 items of clothing in your entire collection well you know that you only have 50 hangers so if you buy another piece of clothing then you don't have another hanger for it so you would have to get rid of something it's the same similar to one in one out but it's just another way to look at it the fourth umbrella or pillar in this case that i want to talk about is getting to know your money this is probably one of the most important parts that you need to do initially if you're on a journey in to either getting out of debt or trying to become more savvy with your money or making a life change where you need to look at your finances. Um, getting to know uh, your money is very important. So the first part of that is I think tracking all of your expenditures. So spend the next month literally writing down everything that you spend. After you determine what your expenditures are and what your hot points are then you need to create a budget i won't get into how to create a budget because that depends on you there are many different ways to create a budget i personally budget per paycheck that works for me but that took me a year and a half uh, to figure out by going through monthly budgeting or yearly budgeting um, so it's going to depend on you and your personality you're going to discover in getting to know your money how much debt you have um, if you've got reoccurring payments uh, such as a car payment, um, including a house payment, um, student loans, credit cards, um, furniture, um, anything else that somebody may be paying payments on, you're going to get to know your debt and you'll need to put your debt together and I recommend tackling that quickly because that is one of the greatest stealers of your wealth right there is owing people money. It also steals your sleep at night because you have more stress that if you lost your job, you wouldn't be able to make those payments. So it's not only just um, you know financial, it's psychological. A couple of other things you could do um, when getting to know your money is I would recommend freezing your credit. Um, this has been great for us. Not only does it offer you some protection against fraud, maybe not complete, but it also will keep you from going and making purchases on finance or financial purchases where you want to finance something without really sitting back and spending some time to think about it because you're going to have to go home, find your password after you figured out what credit agency that finance company is going to want to look at, go onto that credit agency's website, find your password and unfreeze your credit. So during that time, it's very likely that you're going to sit and maybe have rational thoughts, not just that excited thought, and rational rationalize the purchase versus go just on what your excitement is telling you. And the last one under this umbrella is saving raises and bonuses. Um, every time you get a raise or a bonus, um, cost of, even if it's just the cost of living and it's an extra $40 a month, 
go ahead when you're doing your budget and put that money in savings because guess what? You were able to live just fine before not having that raise. So either if you're in debt, you're gonna put that money towards your debt or you're gonna go ahead and put that money in savings. And the last pillar or bucket uh, umbrella that I want to talk about is something that is not necessarily a uh, tangible uh, physical item, um, but more of investing in yourself. You've got to learn how to be content with what you have and who you are. And I'm 36 and it's taken me 30 something years to finally get here. There are many different ways to start this process, but one of the biggest ones that has helped me is learning. Picking up books, uh, listening to audiobooks, watching documentaries. If I'm going to spend valuable time, I'm not going to sit and watch mindless TV. I am going to watch, listen, or read something that is going to benefit me. So with trying to become content, learning, reading, um, exercising, stop scrolling on social media. Um, a couple of things I do is that, that I've recently taken up this year is yoga and meditation, which really go hand in hand. Um, and this all brings me back into who I am, who I came here as, not who I have been conditioned to be. Again, investing in yourself is huge. So if you're spending time investing in yourself, you're not gonna be looking at what other people are doing. You're not going to be going to outside sources to try to make yourself happy. You're gonna be investing in discovering yourself and learning how to be happy in your own skin, which doesn't cost any money. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, take what you want, leave the rest. And if you are interested in this type of content, then definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you back.